Alright guys, so today's the day that I'm actually starting to replace my clutch. I just pulled my car in the garage. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it on jack stands and just try to get a little bit done before I go to work. But I'm so stoked to finally like get this done. I haven't drove the car in like at least a month. But for this video, I'm gonna try to be more instructional than I was in the last time I pulled my tranny. I'm just trying to like motivate like some of you guys if you're uncomfortable doing this by yourself I just want to motivate you guys just a little bit I just hope this video helps you guys uh, do this process yourself because it's really not that hard of a process so I'm gonna get this car on Jack's hands and I'm gonna start getting the clutch out of this car So if you guys can see, before we go ahead and get the bell housing bolts on, so you can see two of them right here, uh, before we start getting those out, we're gonna have to get all the things that hold the transmission to the car. So like you see this O2 sensor plugs, those need to come off. This whole wiring harness needs to come off, and then I need to get the clutch slave cylinder off, just to get it like away from the car. And after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the drive line off. And this exhaust, I forgot about that. This transmission mount, and then all these wiring harnesses, and I might be forgetting a few, but that's essentially what you need to do. I'll do my best at filming it, but I'm gonna go ahead and get those unbolted. So I ran into a problem. Um, I should have left the Y pipe bolts in because I'm having a problem with one of the bolts back there. It's just rusted and it's not wanting to come off. Uh, I didn't think about it because usually I don't have problems with my bolts rusting. It's not really salty here, so nothing really rusts. But that one's not coming off, so I'm soaking it in some penetrating oil. And then while I'm doing that, I'm gonna start unplugging these connectors and getting the clutch master cylinder thing, or the clutch slave cylinder off, just so I have everything disconnected and then I'll go back and I'll start tackling that bolt again. Hopefully it comes off. So we just got the clutch slave cylinder off right there. So next I'm gonna unbolt this little wiring harness mount and then trace it back and unplug everything and get it out of the way. So I'm actually getting the bolt off. I'm using my impact. I had to get it loose with like a, I used a half inch drive ratchet, but I got it loose with the ratchet. And now I'm just on it with the impact to just go into town. So it's finally coming off. I'm gonna go ahead and go back and get this thing off. Just to get this out of the way so I don't have to do this later, I'm gonna unbolt the shifter from the transmission just so I don't have to come up here and do this later when I'm all dirty. So it's pretty simple. You just take this off. And then there's, I think, four 10 millimeter bolts surrounding this, and then four bolts that or three bolts that hold this in. So I'm gonna go under there. I think there's a 12 millimeter bolt that holds the shifter in. I'm gonna go down there, unbolt that, and then after that, I just have to unbolt these three. This pops out, and then this is ready to come out up here, anyways. So guys, when you hear me talk about the bell housing transmission bolts, the ones I'm talking about, I see like those two, they hold the transmission and engine together. And these wrap all the way around the bell housing. You have two right here, and then a few on the other side and a few on the top. To separate them, all you gotta do is unbolt those bolts. You can see another one way up there. You unbolt those bolts and it comes apart. I'm not gonna show this because the room down here is kinda, it's pretty crammed down here, it's gonna be hard to film. But those are the bolts that I'm talking about when I say I'm getting the bell housing bolts out. All right guys, we're to the point where I'm pulling out the motor puller. I uh, pulled it out of the depths of the garage. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap a strap around the bell housing and engine, and then the strap is gonna be attached to this. And what this is gonna do is allow so when I unbolt the transmission, it doesn't fall to the ground. I'll show you guys more in depth once I do that. 
But I'm gonna get this strap and wrap it around the bell housing and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. So I put this two by four in the engine bay to hold up the hood a little further because this sticks out and I don't wanna dent my hood. But anyways, as you can see, I got the strap wrapped around and on the hook, I'm gonna go show you guys what it looks like underneath. It's just wrapped around the transmission. And what this does is just to hold up the front of it so the front of it doesn't fall on its face when I unbolt it. And it lets me get control of it so when I'm trying to line it up and I put it in, I can actually have control and control the angle of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unbolt the drive shaft and then I'm gonna show you guys I'm gonna plug this up so it doesn't leak fluid everywhere because fluid will come out of that when you want to pull the drive shaft and then unbolt the transmission mount and then the bolts and then the transmission is out of here all right so I just got the drive shaft out you can see it's only four bolts right there you just get two wrenches and take those out if you're doing this on a 350z though keep in mind that this is a carbon fiber drive shaft from the factory and when you pull it out you want to be very careful not to bang it on anything or like drop it on the ground because if you put like a blemish in the carbon fiber, it'll explode. It'll make a weak point and it can explode while you're driving. So to be careful with it, I'm just laying it on the ground right there, not touching it. I put it on there really soft so it shouldn't damage it at all. Um, next, this is where the drive shaft goes in and uh, fluid will leak out of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove a bunch of paper towels in here and then just put a rubber band around this ring. And what that will do is just prevent fluid from leaking everywhere because I don't wanna get it all over the garage floor. So after that, I'm just unbolting the transmission and pulling it out and then that's about it. I just have to replace the clutch and then do this all over again, but reverse. So guys, this is your clutch and flywheel. Uh, this actually part, this is the clutch, this is the pressure plate, which applies pressure to this plate one here. That's the clutch. And then this one right here with the gear, that's a flywheel. And then there's all these bolts surrounding it that hold the clutch or the pressure plate to the flywheel. And it sandwiches the clutch, which makes a gripping force, which means your car moves. So I'm going to go ahead and unbolt all these bolts and then unbolt the flywheel. And I'll show you guys what they all look like. All right, guys. So here's the new clutch. So it's been a few hours now. I ended up having to replace the rear main seal. It was leaking, if you can see like these splatter marks that go outwards. It's gonna be really dark, but see these splatter marks that are going outwards? That's from oil leaking out of the rear main seal. I was hoping that I didn't have to replace it, but I ended up having to. That took forever. I That was probably the worst like rear main seal job I've ever had to do. It was horrible. And I hope it doesn't leak because I'm gonna have to do this all over again just to replace that seal. But anyways, I'm gonna open up the new clutch right here and show you guys what it looks like compared to this one because this is a dual mass flywheel and this is a single mass flywheel. So I'll show you guys what the difference is and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the bell housing and bolt this up and then after that we just have to do it all. We just have to plug everything back in. So this is a JWT clutch kit. Um, before I turn this around, I'm gonna clean the back of this off just in case there's any oil. On the back, I will clean it off with this brake cleaner just so it doesn't get onto the flywheel and contaminate the clutch disc. All right guys, so in the meantime, I ended up having to replace my rear main seal. It was leaking fluid. Excuse my horrible RTV job, but if you've ever did a rear main seal on a 350Z while the upper oil pan is in, it is like the hardest thing to do, but I eventually got it in. Hopefully it's not gonna leak. This excess RTV on the outside isn't really gonna mean anything. It's just ugly, honestly, but I have RTV where it matters and that's what counts. No one's gonna see this, so it doesn't really matter. I just pressed out the pilot bearing using a slice of bread. I'll put a link to the video up here if you guys wanna see how I did that, but I got the pilot bushing out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the flywheel up and put it up here and bolt it all in. So I just got out of the hardware store. Basically what I bought, I need it. This is my new pilot bushing but I needed to push it in or press it in without damaging it or like damaging the inside or the outside. So what I did is I bought this, I think it's a 5 8 size bolt, which fits pretty snugly in there and I'm gonna wrap it with tape just so the threads don't damage it. Use this to keep it centered and then I got this big bolt and I'm gonna thread this all the way up here just like that and then I'm gonna use this to hammer this bushing in without damaging it. Yeah, that's a little cheap way to press in these little bushings just so you don't have to go buy an actual bearing pusher. This is probably overkill, but every time before I put flywheel bolts in, I got brake cleaner right here in this like paper bag. And what I do is I just, I clean them off so I can get a good torque on them and so the red thread locker doesn't have any oil or anything obstructing it from actually working, so. Just a little tip, uh, it's probably overkill. I'm probably gonna get roasted for it in the comments, but that's what I do, so I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing it. All right guys, next I'm just gonna get this brake cleaner and with a straw and I'm gonna spray out the threads where the bolts go in. This is probably overkill again, but every time I do a clutch, I make sure just to like eliminate anything that will cause 
eliminate anything that would cause problems. So I'm just gonna spray this out just to clean out the thread. So that's a thread locker. We'll do its job. And so the bolt's actually gonna get torque in there. So yeah. So now the install is saying to tighten them to 90 foot pounds, loosen them, and then tighten them to 93 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll do my best at filming it, but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down. So now before we install the pressure plate, the factories send like a coat of oil on this to prevent it from rusting and you want to clean that off. So just get your brake cleaner and a paper towel, clean one, and spray it off and wipe it down and make sure it's all dry. And that's a brand new flywheel and look how dirty it was. And now I'm going to go repeat this process but on the pressure plate just do the same thing, spray it down and give it a wipe down and then we'll come back and install this and this will be ready to go. I just have to clean out the bell housing and throw it together. I got the new clutch plate right here. Um, if, you can, if you can't tell it has so much more padding on it and see the rivets are actually recessed into the friction material compared to my other one where it was worn down to the rivets. Um, be careful when you open this not to touch it with your hands. You want this to be as clean as possible so if you touch it with your oily hands uh, you're going to contaminate it and that just won't help with gripping. So see how I'm holding it right here. Just do your best not to touch the friction material. And when you put it on here, make sure to do the same. So just get your clutch alignment tool that comes with the kit, push it through the splines and then shove it in here and make sure it's all lined up. Just like that. And then you just grab your pressure plate and throw your pressure plate right on top of that. So I went ahead and replaced the, I replaced the clutch pivot ball bolt right there. Uh, the, the older one was a, it's long in that the old pivot ball bolt was long and what that does is it adds like more leverage for it to snap. I actually snapped one a few months ago and I replaced it with another long one, but I actually bought this kit off of, I think it was Concept Z Performance, but it's just an OEM um, pivot arm thing. See how this one's thin and cast? The new one's thick, so it's stronger and that allows it to work with the smaller pivot ball bolt so that doesn't snap. I'm going to go ahead and install that now and I'll show you guys what that looks like. And when you guys are installing all these parts that touch each other, you want to put a touch of grease. Like, I mean, just a little bit of grease like in there on the end of these little arms and on the throughout bearing itself. Just put a little smear of grease. I'm going to go ahead and put a smear of grease on the where the throughout bearing slides and a smear of grease on these splines. Um, just go ahead and do that and next we just throw it together. Alright guys, so I have the transmission up. It's not bolted in yet. I'm still lining it up. But you can see this is the whole point of the engine pulley with the strap. See how the strap trapped around it and I'm controlling the angle, how it mates up. I can make sure I get that angle right and make sure I can get it in there straight so it slides right in. And then I have a jack in the rear just so I can jack up the rear if needed. But I'm going to continue mating this together and then bolt it together. Alright guys, I'm doing a horrible job filming myself putting it back together, but it's a pretty simple process. All you really gotta do is bolt the belt housing bolts back and do the transmission mount. But I got the transmission mount on and I have the, all the bell housing bolts tight down, tightened down and torqued. And the next thing I'm gonna do is grab this wiring harness and plug in all the sensors and plug in the brackets for it. I'll update you guys here in a second once I finish that. <laughs> Okay guys, I got the wiring harness all plumbed and tightened and plugged in and everything. Wiring harness is ready to go. That's a pretty simple thing. If you just remember where you unplug those sensors, uh, you just plug them back in. It's pretty simple. And up top, and up here I got the shifter all back in. I'm just going to go down there and tighten up the shift linkage to the shifter. And then after that, all I got to do... And then after that, all I gotta do is put up the drive shaft and exhaust and I'm done. So I'll get back to you guys here in a little bit. All right guys, I just finished bolting everything up. Just put on the exhaust. I'm going for the first start and going to see if it moves. My clutch feels so light compared to the old one. I'm gonna call that the end of this video. Uh, my clutch is doing good. 
I've been, I've broken it now, so I put about a thousand miles on it. I went with the JWT single mass lightweight flywheel setup, whatever, um, and it feels way better than the stock one. I don't know if it's just my stock clutch, but my stock clutch felt like a like a sack of potatoes. Like you push it in, it just feels dead. It was really ugly feeling. But anyways, this one feels way lighter. It grabs way harder. It just makes the overall feeling of the car way better. I'm gonna end this video here. I hope you guys like this video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'll have more videos of my 250Z in the future. But I'm gonna get out of here. I'll see you guys later. Bye.